Um, today we're going to be talking about the Old Kingdom uh, time period in ancient Egypt. Uh, first, let's review a couple of concepts from yesterday. Who can tell me one of the natural defenses of um, the ancient Egyptian geography? Carson? Yes, uh, the Nile has cataracts or rapids, makes it difficult to invade through the Nile. Chloe? Yes, the Sahara Desert is to the west. There's other deserts uh, to the east, making it very difficult to cross into Egypt. And one more natural barrier. Who can tell me? Tanner? Delta. Not the Delta. No. Good guess, though. Darcy? Uh, the Red Sea is part of it. Yes, the Red Sea is a natural barrier. There's another sea. Does anyone know what it's called? Carson? Yes, the Mediterranean Sea. Very good. Um, so all of these things together are natural barriers uh, that protected ancient Egypt from invaders. So we talked about the geography, uh, and then we talked about what we call the pre-dynastic period, early, early Egyptian history, and the rise of the first dynasty. Who can tell me the name of the very first pharaoh of ancient Egypt? He had two names. Who can give me one of those names? Jackson? Minas, yes. Uh, we believe that was a title. Uh, what was the other one, Carson? Narmer. Yes, he was the Pharaoh Narmer, the very first uh, Pharaoh of the first dynasty. Um, <clears throat> what did he accomplish? What is he best known for accomplishing, uh, Nicholas? Yes, he united all of Egypt. Uh, Egypt used to be made up of two separate kingdoms, and he united those two kingdoms under his control. What were those two separate regions or kingdoms referred to as? Joshua? Yes, Lower and Upper Egypt. Very good. All right, you guys seem to have retained that information pretty well. So we're moving into a time period called the Old Kingdom today. Um, we separate Egyptian history into several different eras. First, we have the pre-dynastic period, which is before uh, the development of the first dynasty. And then we have what we call the archaic period. You need to know this. Um, it is the time period during which the first and second dynasties were in power. So you need to make a note of that really quickly. The archaic period, the time period during which the first and second dynasties were in power in Egypt. Between the two of those dynasties, they ruled about 400 years. I'll give you a second to get that down. So, after the end of the Second Dynasty, another family rises up and takes power, starting the Third Dynasty around 2700 BC. This also begins what we call the Old Kingdom, the Old Kingdom in Egyptian history. Make a note of that. One of the major um, eras in Egyptian history. The Old Kingdom began around 2700 BC. With the third dynasty, it ended around 2200 BC. This is also the era of the pyramids. I'd make a note of that as well. If you look to the right side of your screen, you will see. Um, a very early form of the pyramid. This is called a step pyramid, one of the earlier uh, versions of the pyramids that you would probably be more familiar with. Anyone know what the purpose of a pyramid is? Jackson? They are tombs. Yes, very good. Um, pharaohs were buried in the pyramids, were tombs. Do you guys need more time with this slide? Can we move on? Put your hand up, Carson. 
Okay, you're good. Great. All right. So, um, during this old kingdom, uh, the Egyptian political system continues to develop. Um, particularly, it centers around the pharaoh. The pharaoh is the absolute monarch, uh, the absolute ruler of um, ancient Egypt. Uh, <clears throat> in fact, the Egyptians pretty much believe that the pharaoh is a god, uh, that he is descended from the god Horus, and so that he is uh, divine, a divine ruler. Um, You'll notice if you look at art, like the picture to the right of that carving, uh, Pharaoh is depicted as being much larger than most of the people that are um, drawn as being around him. Um, that's because uh, he is supposed to be a figure that is larger than life. He is essentially being displayed to the people of Egypt as this godlike being. Um, so they sh he is someone that they should revere, someone they should respect um, and obey. Uh, this is pretty common um, in ancient art. Uh, in fact, in a way, uh, more modern leaders do a very similar thing. It's kind of an ancient form of propaganda, really, uh, presenting people as you want them to be seen, not necessarily as they actually are. The pharaoh is not necessarily any taller than any other man. Um, but in art, he is going to be depicted uh, as a being larger and being in some way divine. You'll see that um, as a pretty common theme throughout a lot of Egyptian art. So um, pharaohs hold absolute power over the Egyptian government, um, but there's a lot of responsibility with that, and one person really can't do it all themselves. So pharaohs typically had a number of government officials um, that they delegated tasks to um, giving them jobs in the government and responsibilities to take some of the pressure and responsibility off of him. Um, usually these are family members, brothers, cousins, nephews, uncles, that sort of thing. Um, people who are close to uh, the royal family or are part of the royal family. Uh, and in this way, he gets a little bit of help in managing, or a lot of help really, in managing the affairs of the kingdom because it's really too much for one person to do. Um, however, Pharaoh is still blamed for the things that go wrong. If there's a drought, Pharaoh's fault. If there's a plague, Pharaoh's fault. Um, he should have done something to prevent that from happening. So there's a lot of responsibility uh, and a lot of pressure on an absolute ruler like this to deliver and to um, basically make sure that things are running smoothly in the country. Does anyone have any questions so far? Do you need more time? All right, moving forward. Um, most pharaohs are depicted as carrying um, an object like you see on, or two objects like you see on the left side of your screen. This is called the crook and the flail. Um, the crook represents the pharaoh being sort of a shepherd of his or her people. Sometimes there were female pharaohs. Uh, that was rare, but it did happen. Um, so this crook represents being sort of a shepherd, a protector of the people. Uh, the flail, however, represents the pharaoh's authority um, and power and also punishment and right to punish those who commit crimes against the pharaoh. Um, so this is a very common symbol of pharaoh's power over Egypt. And you'll see in a lot of art of different pharaohs, they are carrying these two items um, typically crossed over their chest like this pretty common um, stance for pharaohs. Have you guys seen that before? Does that sound familiar? I know, yeah. If you studied Egyptian history or looked at Egyptian art, you'll see this come up pretty regularly. So obviously there are hundreds and hundreds of pharaohs over the course of 3,000 years, but um, we're only going to highlight a few pharaohs that I want to make sure that you're familiar with. First, we're about to talk about the Old Kingdom pharaohs that are responsible for the pyramids at Giza, the Great Pyramids of Giza. Um, has anyone heard of the Pyramids of Giza before? 
cool. Some of you have, some of you haven't. Um, you'll probably recognize them uh, if I show you. Hang on, let me really quickly. I'm skipping the Nearpod ahead. I'll go back. I want you to see this. Uh, does everyone see on their screen in front of them? Uh, that is one of the pyramids at Giza, also the Great Sphinx, uh, which is uh, part of the necropolis of one of the pharaohs we're about to talk about here. Um, <clears throat> so there are three large pyramids located at Giza, and they are the largest in the world. Um, the first of those pyramids belongs to a pharaoh named Khufu, that's K-H-U-F-U. -U. He ruled in the 2500s BC. Make a note of Khufu. You need to be familiar with that. The largest of the great pyramids at Giza, the largest of the pyramids in general, belong to Pharaoh Khufu. Uh, yes, Joshua. Say that again. It is one of the wonders of the ancient world, yes. So the first pharaoh I want you to be familiar with is the pharaoh Khufu. The largest of the Great Pyramids was built during his reign in the 2500s BC. It took about 20 years to build it. Now, Khufu is often represented in myths as being sort of a cool pharaoh. Um, however, the historical records show that he was actually uh, maybe not a kind pharaoh, but uh, the workers that worked for him, they were well paid. Um, the workers that worked on his pyramid, for example, were typically paid in beer, um, but they were well compensated for their efforts. One common misconception is that the pyramids were built by slaves. Um, we don't believe that's actually the case. Uh, these were paid laborers. Uh, they were paid in, like I said, beer, um, which was valuable at that time. It was pretty common for people to pay you in something like that. So Khufu is the first of the pharaohs. He has the largest pyramid. He ruled in the 2500s BC. Um, and his pyramid is located at Giza. Like we said before, pyramids are tombs, final resting places. His pyramid was built while he was still alive for the purpose of um, his burial once he did die. The second pyramid, the second largest pyramid, actually belonged to Khufu's son, Khafre, K-H-A-F-R-E. Uh, and Khafre's necropolis, which is basically like a really big cemetery, um, also includes the Great Sphinx. You, are you guys familiar with the Great Sphinx? Or some. Uh, yeah, if I uh, actually am going to switch back to this picture really quickly. The photograph on the right side of your screen, uh, that is the Great Sphinx at Giza. It's a massive monument, but it's part of Capri's necropolis. And the purpose of the Sphinx is to sort of guard the pharaoh's tombs. So that's included in Capri's pyramid complex. The third and smallest of the pyramids at Giza belonged to Khafre's son, Minkari. Each of these pharaohs was buried in that tomb. Um, however, they have since been plundered. It was, you know, 4,500 years ago. Uh, so the tombs have long since been plundered. The bodies were no longer inside of the tombs. Um, most of the riches were stolen by tomb robbers, things like that. Do you need more time with this slide? Yes, Carson. Um, I believe typically others were buried in the pyramid too, family members. Let me double check that really quickly.
from what I am able to tell, yes, um, family members, queens, things like that, uh, were also buried in the Pharaoh's Pyramid. I'll do a little bit more research on that later just to make doubly sure that I'm telling you the right thing. But yes. Um, also, uh, understand the ancient Egyptians believed that they needed to bring uh, pretty much anything they would need in the afterlife uh, with them. Uh, it would need to be buried with them as well. Um, that meant also they needed food. Um, they needed things like boats. Often um, very early pharaohs, if I understand correctly, were sometimes buried with um, like retainers and servants as well. So they brought pretty much everything they thought they would need with them to the afterlife. And the Egyptian concept of the afterlife is quite complex and we are going to go into further detail um, and depth on that on Thursday and Friday so that hopefully you'll have a pretty good understanding uh, but needless to say they had many many riches buried with them um, including furniture and fabrics and pets uh, they had pretty much everything you might even imagine uh, buried in their tombs alongside them um, so while there were a few pharaohs later on that built pyramids as well, um, that practice mostly stopped uh, with the end of the Old Kingdom. Uh, later pharaohs are typically buried in the Valley of the Kings, uh, which they had splendid, magnificent tombs, but they didn't build these massive monumental pyramids uh, so much anymore, um, typically because like, they're expensive. It takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to build uh, such large tombs. And there were a lot of pharaohs. It became very financially draining for those old kingdom dynasties to do this. Um, we're still not even sure how exactly they built the pyramids. We generally believe it required a large number of workers, uh, ramps, uh, and teams of men pulling the blocks one at a time and putting them in place by pulling them up. It's a huge... Uh... It's a major feat of engineering, um, one that is very impressive for an ancient group of people to have been able to pull off. But the Egyptians were very mathematically um, advanced, uh, uh, had pretty advanced engineering, especially considering the tools that were available to them at the time. So this is a major feat for them to be able to accomplish this during the Old Kingdom. Um, Khufu's pyramid itself uh, covers more than 13 acres at its base, which is a lot. Uh, it stands 481 feet high and it took more than 2 million limestone blocks to build it. Also, um, the pyramid, if you look at it now, yes, that's a pretty impressive structure. But um, back when it was built, it was encased in white limestone um, and capped with gold. So it would have been something very splendid uh, and magnificent to behold. Um, very impressive structures. They're impressive now, thousands of years later, but at the time, it would have probably taken your breath away to see them. Uh, no, his remains, as far as I understand, were no longer in the pyramid. Grave robbers, lots of them. Yes, uh, King Tutankhamun's tomb was uncovered in the Valley of the Kings. Uh, but it was not a pyramid. He was buried in a, 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 I would not at all call it a modest tomb because it was still very, um, very impressive uh, and untouched. So it had all of its, the items that he was buried with still in it. It was nothing compared to uh, what the pyramids would have been like. Any questions? Tutankhamun? Not really. Uh, he was only about 19 years old. The only thing that really makes Tutankhamun uh, distinguished in history is the fact that we found his tomb intact. Um, he died pretty young, didn't reign for a very long time. He was a pharaoh, yes. And he did some important things, uh, reestablished the original uh, Egyptian religions after his father. Uh, Akhenaten actually tried to turn over the religious beliefs in Egypt and change everyone's religion to a, a new cult, essentially. Um, so Tutankhamun did some things that were important, but 
uh, it wasn't really that big of a deal. Um, all right, so what we're going to do for the rest of this class period today uh, is I want you all to go into the uh, week one folder for me. Go find the week one folder. Uh, this is fourth period, isn't it? Okay. Uh, I want you to go into the assignment folder. Everybody with me? Okay. Okay. Tap him, Chloe. Get him. You're missing instructions, dear. Go into the week one folder. Uh, I want everyone to click on the assignments folder. And does everyone see where there's a reading that says Pyramids of Ancient Egypt Reading? PDF. Okay, open that in a new tab. Read through that carefully because it's going to give you even more depth and a little more information about the pyramids. Um, and then I want you to answer the 10 questions uh, in the little uh, assessment below it that says Nuzello Reading and Quiz the Pyramids of Egypt. Everybody see that? All of us see what we're talking about. Okay, um, that's what you're responsible for doing for the rest of this class period today. Uh, when you finish, if you'd like to finish working on the discussion post about Egyptian gods that's due on Friday, you're welcome to do that. Um, the vocabulary should have been turned in last night. If you did not turn it in last night, I'm sorry, the grades are already done for that. Um, if you want to see what you made on the Chapter 4 vocabulary, all you have to do is click on the assignment. You'll see a comment to the right side of your screen from me that tells you your grades uh, for that assignment. Uh, if you finish the pyramid quiz and you finished the uh, research and the discussion post, you can work on something for another class. Um, you are welcome to work on iReady or things like that. Just make sure you find something constructive to do. All right. Got maybe 30 minutes left in class. So make good use of your class time. 